And so I asked the welder, how much is this gonna cost? And he told me it's gonna be about 350. And then right there, that was a dang Loch Ness monster under the hood. When it comes to pricing out your work, there's a lot of things to take into consideration. First off, there's no secret to it, guys. Layout and prep. Having a good plan and then prepping your material before you do any type of welding is what you gotta do to lead to success. If you don't use your layout tools properly, you're gonna have some uneven, unsquare, not good lines to follow. That's gonna lead to, ipso facto, uneven, unsquare lines on your cuts. So what you gotta do next is do your best and grind the rest. If you're poor with that cutting torch or you didn't do your due diligence with your layout tools and you're not good with that saw, you got all these uneven, jagged, haggard cuts, you might just wanna take an L on it, put it to the side and maybe cut some new material and do it right this time. If you don't have that option, just grind everything down, hopefully everything works, but be sure you at least get that rust, that mill skill, that paint, because all that has to be removed before welding. Improper planning, and bad prep, you're really asking for a lot of problems and it's like ordering off the dollar menu. Thank you. Is this your food? Yeah. It's okay. Yes. You're gonna run into a range of problems like maybe porosity, lack of fusion, undercut, a bunch of discontinuities that is just easily avoided if you just prep and clean that material. And depending on what you're doing, you may not need to spit shine the material. Working on carbon steel is a lot different to prep than working on titanium. So just understanding that, you might be able to get away with just some wire wheeling, some buffing, and not having to get down and dirty and grinding. So it's kind of like, you know, a chain restaurant. All righty, we got an appetizer here. All right, and there we go. You know? Anything else I can get you? No, I think that'll do. Okay. All right. Have uh, you enjoyed my service? Um, yeah. I. I think I'll just thank you. Okay. All right. This is still satisfying, right? This is still a solid weld. It's not going anywhere. The prep on it, it's still good. It's still gonna do the job and you might be able to charge just a little bit less than maybe that steakhouse. Speaking of that steakhouse. My good sir, I have your... Oh, oh my eye beam, thank you. Yes. Cook medium rare, medium rare. Yeah, absolutely. And your, your tube side steak. of tube steak. Thank you. The material was properly laid out, the material was properly cut, the material was properly clean, and everything fits up nice, square, and even, and everything's nice and spick and span. It's something that people wanna spend that money on. We talked a lot about prep, but before you can even prep, you gotta make a plan. If you fail to plan, you're gonna fail to execute. Are you kinda like the fire festival that Jerul put on, where there was no planning and everyone showed up and they didn't even have places to go to the restroom. That's kind of like not prepping, not planning, and just winging it. If you don't plan, you're gonna end up with poop on your hands. Is it more like the Renaissance Festival? Most people know about it, not everybody goes. There's plenty of planning that goes into place, but it still has a DIY flavor. That's kind of like having a cut list, but maybe you don't have a drawing. Is it like the Super Bowl? Everybody wants to go. Tickets are expensive because it's planned out. People are planning all year. These teams are prepping. They're ready. They know how they're gonna attack that other team. That's how you come in with your blueprints. All of your cuts are perfect and you know exactly how to put together that part you're making or project that you are going to build. Now when talking about what to charge and money, you gotta have the skills to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. It's kinda like those Super Bowl players that are able to pay for their experience and not their time. Exactly. And since we're talking about sports, are you playing in a rec league? You're not a professional, but you love the game. You probably shouldn't be charging people for your work. Probably not. Kind of like a hobbyist or DIY, you've got to get some more skills sets involved. Maybe you want to go to welding school, get an apprenticeship. One of these things, or just learn at home is fine, but hone in on those skills. Are you an NCAA athlete? and you are so over the moon excited that you can finally get paid for what you do, well, don't charge too much because you're still learning. Yeah, it's exactly like someone who's finally coming up, they got their side business going, they've got some projects and some customers, impress those customers, build your portfolio, you know, be fair, do some, do some market research of what people are charging around you, and do the same. Make sure you're fair, make sure you do good work, and you get to build a good reputation so you can get all that move out. Are you Tom Brady of welding? If you are, you probably shouldn't be watching this right now. You've got way too many skills and you pay all of the bills in full. And people are gonna be willing to pay even more because you built a name and a reputation for yourself as far as a good quality product. But 
you got to be careful because you can bump that price up too high. And you know, Tom Brady even has competition. He was drafted in the 12th round. Fun fact. Fun fact, y'all. <laughs> no one wanted him, but now everyone does. Be that kind of welder. Next thing's gonna be your speed, baby. Time is money and money is time. How long does it take you to do a job? <laughs> right, if you're quoting and bidding by the hour and you know it's gonna take you forever, is that the customer's fault? Mm -hmm. Do you like the sands of time? You it's kind of, like oh, you walk over here, get a tool, kind of play around in your belly button, then go over here and do whatever, play on your phone, and you're charging hourly? Definitely need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Are you more like a train? Steady, reliable, people know they can depend on you, but you're gonna have to make a few stops along the way. You know, it's not the cheapest option out there, but don't overprice yourself, because people might just take the bus. You're quick and deadly with precision. You get jobs done, people pay you for your experience and not your time. You can bid high and promise quick turnaround rates, but be cautious with this lifestyle. Biting off more than you can chew will end up costing you even more than your money. Overall, the best way to judge how you should be charging for your welds is ask. Head on over to the Weld app, drop a question in. There's tons of experienced welders in there. We're in there too, and we would love to give you advice. If you'd like even more insight on what you should be doing as far as bidding for your jobs, check out this video right here.